towering over a wild yet vulnerable kingdom. The King Cobra, the largest venomous snake in the world, is powerful enough to kill a full-grown elephant, and we know almost nothing about it. But that's about to change. Two King Cobras, each surgically implanted with tracking devices, are leading researchers deep into the jungle and into a mysterious world of snake-on-snake -snake violence, cannibalism, and surprising tenderness. Follow these pioneering serpents into their quickly disappearing realms, revealing secret lives no human has ever seen before. In the sun-dappled forests of India, a rat snake tastes the air for the scent of his prey. So intent is the rat snake on his victim, he fails to notice the king. This is his domain, and the king cobra's favorite meal is rat snake. So a second hunt begins. The rat snake sees his mistake, but it's too late. The hooded hunter looms, and the rat snake cowers. The king seems to contemplate his meal. A mistake. There's an intruder in the kingdom. The rat snake uses the distraction to make his escape. The king's dinner will have to wait. The king cobra grows up to almost five and a half meters and has ruled the forests of India for millions of years. But this ancient creature lives in an increasingly human world, and its kingdom grows smaller every year. King cobras reside throughout Indonesia, Malaysia, and much of Southeast Asia, but a mountain range along India's southwest coast, known as the Western Ghats, has perhaps the highest density of king cobras in the world. The Ghats are one of the wettest places on Earth. Vast quantities of India's water run through its labyrinth of rivers and waterways. Endless water providing for limitless life. And countless species. All this life ensures a chain of never-ending death. But it's the King Cobra that rules these forests. It can live up to 30 years of age and never stops growing. To accommodate this endless growth, the king must shed its skin four to six times a year. The first sign, its eyes become cloudy. From a milky secretion released to help separate old skin from new. When its eyes clear, it begins shedding. It can take up to 10 days to scrape the used flakes of itchy, irritable skin free. It's an anxious time in the life of a snake. 
and a bad time to seek out the company of humans. But houses offer warmth, shelter, and a choice of hiding places. It seeks only solitude, but packs enough venom to kill a human many times over, and might defend itself if disturbed, with fatal consequences. Fortunately, the villagers around here revere the king and know who to call when one takes up residence. Okay. Gauri Shankar, the conservation officer at the Agumbe Rainforest Research Station, has dedicated his life to saving and studying the king cobra. Gauri and the founder of the research station, renowned herpetologist Ram Whitaker, are about to embark on the most ambitious study ever conducted with the king. They want to capture and radio tag king cobras for the first time and follow them into the wild. But they need a king for the experiment, and this distress call may provide the perfect opportunity. There are problems with king cobras sometimes, and no matter how patient and how kindly they feel toward king cobras, having one in your bedroom is no fun. Capturing king cobras is a potentially deadly business. Even the best get bitten. Yeah, just look at Gowrie has been bitten once. Quite clear here. Ram's been struck twice, and he's now allergic to the antivenom. If it's anywhere, it's going to be under the baskets. I think I can see her already. Yeah, she's glistening under there. Easy does it, easy does it. Oh, man. Yep, and she's shedding her skin, too. He handles the nearly three-meter king with an ease that comes only from decades of experience. Well, she's really nice, Gary. She looks like a female. They know by the size of the head and the coloring of the skin that this king okay, is actually a yep. queen. And let's get this Before they bag her, they take a photograph to record the pattern on her hood. And it's kind of like fingerprinting an animal, isn't it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. One more. Pick but to do this, One they more. must make her open her hood. Try to get a good In other words, make her mad. Okay, Not something for the faint of heart. With these mugshots, they hope to assess how many snakes live in the area and keep tabs on snakes they've met before. Okay. Yeah. A successful photo ID, yeah. and they offer her a dark escape. A capture bag fitted with a piece of PVC pipe. See the pipe. And the rescue is complete. You're just scared. Normally, they'd release her away from the village. But they've got much bigger plans for today's prize. They'll take her back to the research station to prep her for a groundbreaking role in Cobra research. Until now, studying kings in their natural habitat has been virtually impossible. The forests are too dense and the snakes too elusive. As a result, little is known about the king's life in the wild. Where it goes, what it does, or the size of its range. Ram and Gowri's plan is to surgically implant small radio transmitters into two king cobras and follow them into the wild. Because these little understood animals are now endangered, this research project is more important than ever. India's forests are rapidly disappearing as humans push deeper into the wilderness. It is estimated that snakes kill as many as 50,000 people in India every year. While the king cobra is the largest venomous snake in India, there have been only four reported deaths in South India in the past 20 years. And though it has more venom than any other snake, only 10% of the people they bite die. Because kings can control how much venom they release. 
Muscles around the venom glands contract, squeezing calculated amounts of neurotoxins through its hypodermic fangs and into the victim. Or it can release none at all, which is often the case with humans. After all, venom is valuable. And the king is a prolific killer of other snakes. The king cobra's diet consists almost entirely of serpents. Though it's an apex predator among reptiles, the king increasingly finds itself in competition with people. As India's burgeoning human population continues to grow, farms and plantations carve deeper into the forests of the Western Ghats and wandering kings often find themselves in unfamiliar territory. Now Gauri and Ram have been called out to a betel nut plantation where a local snake handler has trouble by the tail. It's a king who has taken refuge in a hole at the base of a tree, and the base of the tree is at the top of a cliff. I mean, the danger factor is just too much, man. It's, never mind a venomous snake, but how about a 40-foot drop to your death along with it, you know? <laughs> They'll need a serious plan to save this snake and keep themselves out of danger. But if they catch this snake, they'll have their second pioneer serpent, and the research project can begin in earnest. Safety first, dudes. To keep from falling 12 meters to the plantation below, Gowry ropes himself in. Once we spot the head, that will help us a lot. We don't know where exactly the head is. He might be 9 or 10 feet. The plantation worker's plan is to pull the tree down, tearing it and the snake from the ground. But that quickly proves too difficult. And Gowrie takes over. Carefully digging around the hole, he loosens the snake's grip on the earth. Until finally, the king comes free. Now the local snake handler, perched precariously on the top of the cliff, finds himself face to face with an angry king. But with a firm grip on the tail, Gauri drags the three and a half meter serpent from the cliff. This snake is broader and lighter in color than the female they rescued earlier. It must be a male. As the audience gathers, Ram and Gauri try to lure the serpent into the bag. And after some coaxing, the king obliges. Toughest catch I've ever seen in my life, actually. Insane, actually. Now the tagging can begin. With both a male and female king cobra, they'll be able to compare the behavior of the sexes, something that's a complete mystery right now. It's time to call in the expert. Matt Good is a herpetologist from the University of Arizona and a leading authority on tracking snakes. Well, it's difficult because the animals that we study are very secretive. You really have to be creative. There's just as much art in it as there is science. And you sort of got to think like a snake, I guess. Matt has implanted radio transmitters in hundreds of venomous snakes, but never a king. Radio telemetry has really just revolutionized the study of snakes. Before, you know, you could release a snake and probably never see it again. Now we can track it and we can find out what it's doing on a minute-by-minute -minute basis if we want. 
the real motivation of what's it like to be a snake? Yeah. Doc, go ahead and load up some anesthesia. At the station, the team preps the female for the unique operation, taking every precaution to ensure her safety. Now let's get some tape. They must estimate how much anesthetic to use. Too much, and she might not wake from her drug-induced sleep. Matt makes an incision. And carefully inserts the radio transmitter between the vital organs. This small tracking device will emit a signal that a specialized receiver can pick up from over 300 meters away. Then Matt inserts two small buttons. These will take temperature readings every hour for the next two years. Some final stitching and the operation is complete. The king was shedding when captured, so they remove the final flakes of dead skin. Including the eye cap, the dead skin covering the eye. Fairly okay, See fairly clearly through that. All that is left is to wake her up. But she does not respond. So Matt inserts a straw into her trachea and gives the king mouth to mouth, trying to flush the anesthetic from her lungs. But she still won't wake up. Because kings are an endangered species, the forest department keeps careful watch. Finally, the king takes a breath for herself. Thanks, doc. That was fantastic. Thanks, everybody. The surgery is a success. Tomorrow, it's the male's turn. That's so cool, man. Soon, both snakes will be released into the wild. This looks like a great spot to me, right in yeah. the stream bed. Yeah. This female king was rescued from a human world. So for the study, the team releases her 30 kilometers away from her old home, far from humans. Ah, oh, there she is. By following the king into her world, they'll learn how far she ranges, when she's active, and how she behaves in the wild. Matt is also eager to see if the king has a homing instinct. It's one of the main goals of this study, is to understand if there's a difference between translocated snakes and the ones which are already in their home range and are used to where they live. If a relocated snake simply returns to its old territory on human turf, then relocation itself is not the solution. If we have to come catch them and translocate them, then we have a problem on our hands. And if she continues to clash with people, she could be killed. Anxious for a quick escape, the snake moves south, away from its home range. Only time will tell where she's headed. The day the journey begins, you know? The adventure begins, we'll see what this snake does. It's gonna be really cool. Matt and his students set out on the snake's trail, tracking as many as eight kilometers a day. Matt, I think we should head that way. For the volunteers, it's the experience of a lifetime complete with myriad encounters found nowhere else on Earth. But they must keep all their focus on the king.
A few days later, they released the male King Cobra, also armed with a tracking device. That's it? Cool, man. Food is his priority after his ordeal. He tastes the air, drawing in microscopic scent molecules with his tongue. The tongue then transfers the molecules to a small organ, the Jacobson's organ, in the roof of the mouth. Here, the molecules are identified and the information is passed to the brain. One scent in particular rivets his interest, a rat snake. His keen vision pinpoints the victim. It too is a formidable hunter, growing almost two and a half meters in length. But it's also the king's favorite food. The rat snake tries to look intimidating, but it's outmatched in every way. The king cobra towers over his victim. Hypodermic fangs deliver a massive dose of neurotoxic venom. The rat snake is not venomous, so its desperate counterattack does little to deter this predator. The king then walks his fangs up the body. Each gnawing bite injects more venom until the struggling lessens and an all-out attack on the nervous system begins. Eventually, the diaphragm and lungs are paralyzed and the victim asphyxiates. Kings always eat their prey head first. Backward facing teeth help guide the victim down. The venom has already started to digest the rat snake from the inside out. It absorbs the entire snake, bones, scales, everything. He's tired and vulnerable after his big meal and will lay low for almost a week hiding in the leaf litter. The radio-tagged female is still on the move. For the eager volunteers, it's a trial by fire, bad weather, treacherous terrain, and one of the densest populations of deadly snakes in the world makes tracking through these forests extremely dangerous. And trouble can come when least expected. Just a few days into the project, they lose the female snake's signal. Nothing, huh? You know, guys, we got to get up out of this stream bed. We got to get up on top and see if we can get that signal. And we need to do it quick, or otherwise we're going to lose this snake. If they don't pick up the signal soon, the king could be gone forever. If following the tagged snakes proves impossible, the project will fail. Desperately, the research team scrambles to high ground, trying to regain the King Cobra's signal. 
The tracking device implanted in her side broadcasts more than 300 meters, but in some conditions, it can be far less than that. Oh, there it is. We got it. Yeah, it's a long way away, so we're going to have to really move it. They finally locate the signal. But they must still visually locate the animal. There it is. We still got it. There she is. There she is. Back down. Nice. Matt marks the area and takes a GPS reading of the location. It's still too early to tell whether the female king is moving in search of a mate or if she's seeking out her old home. The ever-changing relationship between animal and environment has always pushed Mother Nature to the limit. The ability to adapt and evolve is what forges them together in order to survive. In a brand new series, we immerse ourselves in the beauty of nature as Natchio Wild goes to the ends of the earth to uncover a unique bond between... As the female king slithers, she secretes pheromones, leaving a potent scent trail along the forest floor. For the eager male who picks up the scent, it's a road map to her affections. Finding her is only the beginning of his trials. The females are often wary of the larger males, and with good reason. He could kill her if she does not accept him. But she could also kill him, so he bumps and nudges her with his nose, an eager flirtation. Eventually, the seduction works, and our female relents. She spreads her hood and raises her head off the ground. Mating can take as long as an hour. If all goes well, in about a month, she'll lay some 20 to 40 eggs. The heirs to the throne. Not more than 20 kilometers away, the tagged male wanders back into a betel nut plantation. He's watching Two. us. Yeah, he's, he's watching, watching us. Watching us. Watching us. The snake has climbed high into a tree. King cobras often climb in search of food or simply to bask in the sun. Hmm. First, they try cutting down the branches around him. He's going up, he's going up. But he only pushes higher. In the end, they cut the whole tree down. They once again coax him into the bag. The tagged male's attraction to humans offers some troubling insights into the snake's behavior. Don't move. No one will move. If he's lost his fear of people, his behavior could be dangerous for serpent and human alike. With populations continuing to grow, finding a safe way to coexist with kings is a priority. Back in the forest, the radio-tagged female king has spent the past two weeks with her mate. When another male wanders into their territory,
During the breeding season, when two male snakes collide, everything is on the line. Often mistaken for a mating dance, this display is actually a form of ritualized combat. Unwritten rules govern the duel, and there's no biting allowed. Rising higher than a meter, each tries to pin the other to the ground. With a final non-venomous blow, the contest is ended. The resident male has lost, and he must leave his territory and his mate. And to the winner go the spoils. Like all males this time of year, this snake seems to have only one thing on his mind, sex. But our tagged female has already mated and wants only to be left in peace. Unfortunately, she is about to play out a horrifying scene. At first, the new male King Cobra seems to be merely persistent in his courtship and the tagged female playing hard to get. But she's carrying another male's eggs. Is it possible he senses the rival's offspring? For whatever reason, his intentions turn from mating to murder. She is not fully immune to her own kind's venom. And he squeezes her in his vice-like jaws, pumping venom into her bloodstream. But death does not come quickly. He is her physical superior, but she will not surrender. After more than a half an hour, with every ounce of life left in her, she begins to roll. This death roll might be the final fight for freedom, or simply the final breath of life, but it signifies the end. After 45 minutes, the queen is dead. While the male's true motives for the murder are unclear, he is a snake eater, so he begins to swallow her. But he may not have killed her out of hunger. Whether he's just an aggressive male on the rampage, or if some other variable led to a breakdown in the rules of the game, we may never know for sure. But the pregnant queen is too large, and he cannot swallow her. So he regurgitates her lifeless body and pushes on, 
leaving the female king and the eggs inside her for the scavengers. Life in the wild is a series of harsh realities, but for every tragedy, there is new hope. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's huge. Don't, don't go there. Okay. Ram and Gauri have been notified of another female king, this one building a nest in a nearby tract of forest. Perfect. With a tagged female gone, they put the new female on 24-hour surveillance hoping to witness the rise of the next generation. With the monsoons coming, the Mother King's new brood will need shelter. She's the only snake in the world that builds a nest for her eggs, piling leaves onto a mound as tall as one meter high. That is so methodical, and that's why you have this symmetry. When she finished that side, she came exactly to the opposite, opposite side. side. When yes. she finished that side, she came to the other side of the nest, and now she's coming this side. It must be perfect for the eggs to survive. High enough to avoid flooding, but sheltered enough to maintain the right temperature. The eggs must incubate at 28 degrees Celsius. It can take more than 12 hours of rigorous work. The mother king will stay with the nest, standing guard, unable to hunt, until her eggs are ready to hatch. She could go as many as three months without a meal. Meanwhile, our tagged male snake is still on the move and has wandered once again into a human world. He is drawn here on the trail of a potential meal a rat snake stalking a rodent right into someone's front yard. Nothing will interrupt this hunt. Twisting and turning, he mauls the victim, pumping it full of venom. Witnessing this hunt in human territory confirms a suspicion Ram and others have held for some time. We're learning an awful lot by radio tracking for the first time. And we always suspected they spend plenty of time in rice fields, and that's where they find their rat snakes, because that's where the rat snakes find rats. But now we've really proved it with what we found out. Humans attract rats. Rats attract rat snakes. And rat snakes attract king cobras. Still, Despite increased contact with the serpents, human deaths are not on the rise. It is the king cobras who are more at risk. But as the dry season wanes, the kings have more immediate concerns. The monsoons of the Western Ghats are legendary dropping almost nine meters of rain annually in some places. And everyone must adapt to the monsoons. People, animals, even the king. The deluge batters the female king's nest. If the water rises too high, all her efforts will be lost and all of her babies could die. For months, torrential rains soak the Western Ghats. But millions of years of evolution have taught this mother well. The center of the nest stays dry and the eggs are safe. Finally, after 100 days, the baby snakes are ready to hatch, triggering the hungry mother's departure. She is, after all, a snake eater, and no doubt hungry enough to eat her own young. So instinct drives her away in search of an unrelated victim. Deep in the nest, using a sharp, tiny tooth, a new king tears the leathery egg casing. 
and breathes its first breath. They emerge one by one over the course of a few days, 25 snakes in all. Armed with a predatory hunger even at birth, they will remain by the nest for 24 hours to absorb their nutritious yolks, sustenance for the hard days ahead. They are less than a day old, already powerfully venomous, but still vulnerable. Left on their own, most of the babies will be taken by predators such as raptors, mongooses, even other snakes, or they will die of starvation. Only one or two of the 25 snakes will survive to adulthood. And even then, nothing is guaranteed. For Ram, after 37 years of studying the King Cobra, the tagging project has shown him that he's just beginning. I wish I could say I know a lot about King Cobras after all these years. To be honest with you, you know, we've barely scratched the surface. So far, the research project has been a success and has provided a rare glimpse into the secret world of the king. What we've learned so far is pretty amazing stuff. We know now the kind of resting places they prefer in, in caves. They go in caves and holes an awful lot. They climb a lot, which we suspected before, but now we've really proved that as well. They've also found that the male moved much farther than the female. Before the female was killed, she traveled around five kilometers but over the first seven months, the tagged male snake has moved more than 75 kilometers, and he shows no signs of slowing down. We had a sighting recently, and he looks in very good shape, which means he has been feeding, he has been drinking, has been living well. We were always a little bit worried. This is the first time King Cobra has ever been radio tracked. We don't want him to feel as though he's being chased by us. We want him to do everything naturally. But there are troubling discoveries as well. Researchers believe the male snake is moving in search of new territory. But it seems he's learned that human habitat is a good source of food, shelter, and warmth. And he's twice made his new home in our world. Simply relocating snakes away from humans is not the answer. But the solution remains a mystery. One thing is certain, as people expand deeper into the wilderness, something is bound to give. What we're looking at is a mosaic of forest, paddy fields, and plantations, and that's King Cobra country. Year by year, the agricultural land is expanding right into the forest. King Cobras really depend on this land as well. The Western Ghats have already seen their share of destruction. In the past century, undisturbed forest in the Ghats has dwindled from about 100,000 to a meager 13,000 square kilometers. Now a biodiversity hotspot, it is one of the most endangered ecosystems on Earth. India has lost about 80% of its rainforest, and that's our fear, you know, that the rest of it could go, that we'll lose most of the king cobra's habitat. But the most intriguing discoveries from the tagging program have also been the most shocking. Since the project began, male kings have killed two pregnant female king cobras within a 20 kilometer radius. The researchers don't yet know whether the killers were rogue males on a rampage or if the brutal killings of pregnant females is common among wild kings. The answers will only come with continued research. And the success of this pilot project will go a long way in advancing the study of the king. Here it is there, no. Oh.
An autopsy of the dead female confirms that she was indeed pregnant. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. There's one more. Carrying 17 eggs when she met her untimely end. She is laid to rest with a royal funeral pyre, a fiery homage to this pioneering.